Hey, what is good, ladies and gentle niggas? It be that nigga, Moo Monkey, coming at you with another episode of Viewer's Choice for Glory. It's the series where you, the viewers, get to pick whatever character I play in Smash Brothers every single Friday. How do you do that? Well, down in the description, there's going to be a link to a poll. Click the poll, vote for some cats, because we'll tally them up next week and see who won. Also, we talk about Smash Ultimate leading up to December 7th. So, we, whoa, 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 hold on. Let me not get ahead of myself. We'll talk about Smash Ultimate later in the video. Trust me. But let's get back to these uh, poll rankings that you guys voted for top three characters we playing for today we got zero the same is coming third place who played her one time link came in second place who played link two times and the nigga that came in fourth place we got my nigga roy so we played roy three times link two times and zero the same is my fucking one time all right let's get it popping now with all that out of the way i want to tell you guys first and foremost that i will be streaming smash ultimate when it comes out so i'll probably oh he left uh should i cut right here and eh, we could probably wait yo yeah we got kazoogly what kind of me is oh, i fucking hate me i can't wait to play with these niggas online oh my gosh well anyway i will be streaming smash uh wii u up to smash uh ultimate's release on december 7th so december 6th playing up for the last time smash wii u so if you want to play some 1v1s before the game drops that's the place you're gonna see me so follow me on twitch follow me on twitter i'll be tweeting out when i'm ready to to go live and shit so up uh, let's get it popping we only got three more viewers choices my niggas three more viewers choices until we have smash ultimate oh my goodness all right so right now we duel against this bowser right now we gotta be careful but we are dealing with roy um speaking of roy royal looks to be pretty nasty in smash ultimate it's gonna be kind of crazy i want to i'm curious to see who's gonna be the top tiers of course we're gonna have like the typical we're gonna have like all the sorties like fucking roy marth lucina of course you're gonna have like diddy kong i don't know about fox but who knows who knows who's gonna be we might have like a sleeper like a fucking like palutano might be top here who knows my niggas probably not but who knows <laughs> but yeah um for these smash open parts I, I typically like to talk about like the blog updates but honestly with the game being out in demos and all these tournaments and shit we kind of get to see a lot of the characters in motion we know a lot about like what buffs and nerfs they have right off the back off a first glance so really not really that interested in talking about oh caught the bowser right there with that nice up smash um but we really don't really care about like the little short teasers that they give us for like on the on the website so we could kind of talk about a little something substantial oh he caught me there um we could talk about this interview that sakurai did with uh uh, a recent interviewer where he talked about his inclusion of the last two fighters into the game. Now, he talked about Incineroar and Ken. Pretty much, he pretty much said that Ken could have been his own Echo Fighter, but pretty much, ultimately, it's up to him deciding who gets to be an Echo Fighter and who doesn't, which I guess would make sense because Krom doesn't really like he'll be an Echo Fighter, but Sakurai says he's an Echo Fighter, so so be it. The nigga makes the game, who are we to judge, you know? <laughs> um, now, Incineroar is kind of weird because unlike Greninja, Greninja Sakurai um, didn't wait for us to even know who Greninja was. He just just thought like hey he looks like a cool character and oh kind of catch me hey yeah bowser's trying to do some unrisk uh, risky shit now he thought like people like greninja and he kind of just said hey people might like oh <laughs> did you see he thought bowser thought he was ready but bowser was not i'll, I'll tell you right now my boy boy which tells me that he was not ready i'll tell you this i'll tell you this my friend <laughs> all right hold on hold on i'm gonna cut right here real quick all right, sorry about that. I had to let my dogs out, but we good, we good, we back, we back. Now, what else I was talking about? Oh, yeah, uh, Incineroar. So, like, uh, for Smash Wii U, Sakurai pretty much knew about Greninja before the general public did, and he kind of decided on picking Greninja because he thought he looked cool. So, that's how he kind of went about for Greninja. Incineroar, he actually waited for Pokemon Sun and Moon Ultimate, or Ultimate Sun and Moon, to come out before deciding on which Pokemon that he wanted to include into the game. So, that's kind of interesting. One character he kind of just preemptively picked, one character he kind of, like, waited and scoped out to see like i don't know how the character reacts or his persona is in like the anime in the video games which would be the most popular and shit so I, maybe i kind of like that approach but from what i mean from what i've seen on twitter and like the internet a lot of people have been hoping for decidui to be playable so i'm not sure i'm pretty sure instagram got his own fans but i think ultimately like he said um he said that he ultimately picked instagram because he wanted to try his hand out a wrestler character so maybe that's why he ultimately went with instagram maybe Decidueye really had like a really good chance to be in the game, but um, he kind of really wanted to do uh, a wrestler character, which kind of goes with my first thing with Ken uh, not being uh, his own character. It goes wherever Sakurai says. If Sakurai says he wants fucking Incineroar over Decidueye, so that's what the nigga wants. So that's what we have to deal with. All right, so that's pretty much it when it comes to like the two last characters into the game that he talked about. But he also talked about a couple other things. He talked about like Amiibo stocking supplies. He talked about like all the work of production, that pre-production that goes into before he ships out all the Amiibo and like all the stress and uh, the hard work and 
of prototyping and shipping out all the new amiibos go out and that's why we kind of have to do it in ways because he kind of has to like prep in months in advance to kind of build up stock inventory because people be out there fiending for all these different types of amiibos and it kind of makes sense why they kind of have to like separate them while they do like all right that Yoshi kind of not switching it up so i was kind of just throwing out my up ears he just kept on going for down ears and shit oh egg caught me oh snipe away oh no it's too late for that fourth match if I, was, if I was a little better i probably would have caught that yoshi easy gotta be careful he easily dare me um but yeah he talked about the amiibo preparation and shit and why he, they had to go in waves so that's kind of interesting um and he also talks about his uh changes for the online he talks about the the new way that you're connecting with other people with uh global smash power which i think global smash power on the wii u really wasn't much of like a ranking system it was more so oh yoshi was not ready he was not ready either shit. <laughs> he was not ready either yoshi was just out here just think he's gonna do whatever he want now yoshi's kind of risky because he's able to kind of throw down a lot of moves you have to respect on the way down like his down b and his like dare but link got a nice up here that can kind of outrange yoshi in a lot of those moves so i kind of just felt safe enough to throw it out so all right Good shit, good shit. I'm gonna hit my. Oh, he left. All right, cool. All right, we back, we back, we back. All right, so we got out here, buddy. What's popping, buddy? Foxtrot. All right, so, um, Global Smash Power. So in Smash, with you Global Smash Power seem to only really factor in like things like I don't know the your home run contest score, your target practice, all the other shit. It's really factor in your win to lo lose ratio online. So it's good to kind of see that factor in to see what kind of players you get because honestly, I always like to try to get better and sometimes getting players that don't re are not really into for glory or like not really at my level. It's kind of like not challenging. I really like to be challenged, you know. So I, I kind of appreciate this change, especially Elite Smash, um, being able to go into a focus of people that are exclusively focused on competitive smash that's definitely seemed like a dope mode that i would really like to try to get into to improve my game so most people will try to get into that if they're serious about competitive smash oh try to get this villager out of here this is going to seem to be kind of annoying especially when you try to box me out but as long as you kind of rush him down i think we oh maybe if i caught him with like a side b i probably oh, I could pop his balloons and shit um but yeah, I'm definitely happy to see. Oh, I'll try to catch him. But I'm very happy to see how what Global Smash Power does, especially with the region. I'm focusing on uh, people in the regions to pair up for better connections. They seem to be playing a lot of uh, attention to how everyone's experience is going to be online. And I kind of like that. Hopefully, we have all the modes that we've come to know from online. Because I know in Smash Wii U, uh, some certain modes are just locked off online. Now, tournament mode would last for like a short while. I think they'll probably bring that back online as well. Maybe continue to do that. Uh, that they have like this thing called uh, it's like challenge of the week or some shit. Like every time before a match starts, you could like contribute to the characters that are on the poll. Whatever character wins the most, they win for that week or so. I don't know. It was some kind of like cool thing you could kind of see in the background while you play online. So who knows? But hopefully their online ecosystem is as robust as I think it's going to be. Um, other than that, I think that's about it for Sakurai's interview. Now, that wasn't all the interviews. We also got an interview with Reggie fils which he pretty much kind of like talked about. He kind of reiterated what Sakurai said about DLC characters, talking about how they're already decided. Oh, I could probably rush his villager. Oh, before the Lloyd was out. Let's go. Gotta put the, he got to keep the foot upon their necks. Don't let them breathe, nigga. Don't let them breathe. You ain't breathing nowhere, though. You ain't breathing. <laughs> Let's get him popping. Shit. But I think we'll probably cut right here, maybe. Uh, nah, we won't cut. All right, we back. We back. Homie was definitely taking his sweet time. I don't know what he was doing, but we out here. We playing Roy versus Mar. They're interesting. All right, but yeah, like I was saying, um, oh, you want to start off taunting? All right, let's oblige. All right, we greened up out here. Green Marth, Green Roy. Let's go. Um, So... Reggie kind of reinstated what Sakurai said about, like, don't bother us. We already have the DLC already lined up. So if you have any characters that you want, you're out of luck, my nigga. We, already, we got everybody we want. We got everybody we want. Um, but that's what all uh, Reggie said. Reggie also kind of uh, talked about Sakurai's time. Oh, yeah, yeah. This kind of, I don't know if this is like happening in Reggie's interview. I think this happened in Sakurai's interview. But Sakurai also talked about the timeline where we could expect to see uh, the Piranha Plant playable in Smash. He said within the first two months of Smash Wii U, I'm mean, not Smash Wii U, Smash Ultimate's release. So I think that kind of brings us to about February. I'm guessing we could probably see Piranha Plant. And that kind of 
kind of gives us like a timeline of when to expect the rest of the DLC character because he kind of, oh, I kind of dodged out of that fucking shield breaker. You got to see my toes. I think about Marth, like he kind of, me, Roy and Marth, they just like inverse each other. Marth wants to keep me away and I'm trying to get in Marth's face. So it's going to be like a dance thing. He's going to be trying to space me out. I'm going to try to get in his face. Nairs is probably, oh, he opened. I'll try to catch him here. Yeah, so Nairs would probably be my best bet to get close to the Marth and probably down to. But yeah, Sakurai said pretty much February ish, we could probably expect to see Piranha Plant. Um, we got five other DLC characters that we could probably expect to see in the game. Oh, nice counter. Um, so, and he said the final uh, DLC run will take us to February 2020. So, we could probably see if we have five characters. Oh, nice up till caught him there. Um, if you have five characters leading up to February 2020, I'm guessing we'll probably get a DLC character maybe like every three months, every two months. Maybe, yeah, every two or three months, we'll probably expect to see a new character. Um, up to February 20th, yeah, in the last, probably the last character will probably be on that February. That will be kind of dope. I always like the fact that having DLC kind of spruced up the whole meta of the game. You saw how Cloud and Bayonetta, well, especially Bayonetta, kind of shake up the whole game when they was released. Damn, like, I, I can't wait. Not to mention we got, like, balance patches and shit. I can't wait to, I can't, oh, am I going to live from this? Can I, I'll be there. Oh, no, 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 no. Nice, nice, uh, shield pressure, not shield pressure, edge pressure on the Mart's part. All right, you got to kind of get a little closer to this Mart. But I guess that's about it for, like, the two, the two interviews between Reggie and Sakurai. Um, I'm definitely excited to see what happens when this game comes out when it comes to like DLC um, and I guess online preparations for like sustaining kind of like Splatoon because Splatoon has been like a really good model of like oh I think Mars done from that yeah that's that's blouses that's no blouses baby nah that's a that's what they call a body bag <laughs> all right good shit good shit shout outs to my boy uh, fuck it. What's your name again? Oh, I'm sorry, my name. I think it's Foxtrot. Yeah, Foxtrot. <laughs> I'm kind of bugging right now. All right, cool. So, um, I guess we gotta move right on to my nigga Linko. Alright, we back. Yeah, you can see, you can see how long this nigga's been taking. We have to wait like damn near like a whole damn minute for him to get ready. But we out here. So pretty much all the interviews we could probably talk about. I'll probably talk about select uh, blog updates uh, throughout the video. We could probably talk about the topic that I kind of really want to talk about later. Um, but we could talk about uh, the stages. Now we talked about Pokemon Stadium during the week. Uh, Sakurai mentions that it has a uh, new well, it went back to its classic form. They got they pretty much scrapped old Pokemon Stadium, which nobody really liked the old Pokemon Stadium. Like the flight mode was horrible, ice mode was just hideous. Like nobody liked those modes at all. So I'm glad they brought back the OG one. Um, people are saying that they want hazards off Pokemon Stadium, but honestly, Pokemon Stadium one really wasn't that bad when it comes. Well, no, they had a really campy mode. I think the fire version was very campy, but. Who knows? I kind of like the different variations, but yeah, fire mode was can definitely add to some problems, especially with the windmill, the windmill, the windmill, uh, especially with I think it's an active like wall box. It, it could be. I don't know. I don't know if you could tech against it, but I do know that could kind of lead to some shenanigans. Oh, call me open right there. Um, but you're going to have to uh, pay attention to like the mode that are changing. I, I really like the transition. Oh, the Pocahontas with the blow away. I see you Pocahontas. Shit. Um, I'm definitely liking Pokemon Stadium. It definitely seems to be retweaked a little bit. It's not as big as Melee. It seems to be a little bit more condensed, which I kind of like in Smash Ultimate. Smash Ultimate seems to be very aggressive. Smaller, tighter uh, stages. Um, that way it can encourage a little bit more combat. Oh, nice. He caught me the same way with Roy, too, with the aggressive uh, fair off stage. All right, I got to put a little pressure on this mark. There you go. F tilted, nigga. You want to be aggressive, nigga? Let's go. Um, but yeah, I like the kind of smaller stage that kind of focuses on that. Um, other than that, we got a new soundtrack from Splatoon. Um, definitely dope. I kind of like Splatoon music. You know, they, they got these nice high energy songs. And I, I, I can't, you can't go wrong with these babies. You can't go wrong with them at all. Um, other than that, that's about it for the blog updates. They also talk about Little Mac, but we already know about Little Mac. Little Mac um, is going to be kind of scary, I think, in Smash Ultimate, especially with the new buffs to do everything out of like Dash. I think he's going to find his place. I don't know. Max or Max can run the range of like really good to 
<laughs> you're so scared of them that they are really good, you know? Like, they they on some otherworldly plane shit, man. But I'm interested in seeing how little Mac is actually going to transition over to Ultimate. But other than that, that's pretty much for the blog age. I really care about, like, the new triangle. I talked about it, like, a couple of viewer choices ago um, for Spirits Mode. Spirits Mode, I'm not going to really care that much. Although, for when I stream it on December 7th, we probably run through the uh, Spirits Mode because I think that's the main way to get all the characters unlocked. But, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right, we out here with G. Ricky. Let's see what G. Ricky got in store for us. Now, what I want to talk about for like the topic of this video is stage picking for competitive play. Now, a lot of people have been saying that we should probably limit the amount of stages that we have for competitive play. What stages should be hazardless? What stages should be hazard toggled on and off? Um, me personally, I will hope to have like the biggest pool of competitively viable stages. Of course, I don't want like stages like uh, hazard hazardless uh, Midgar. I, I don't want Midgar playable at all, but Midgar hazardless is just Battlefield. I don't think that's going to be uh, worth anything, but stages like WarioWare is going to be dope. Pokemon Stadium is going to be dope. Um, stages that will kind of add a variety and layout of different platforms. I don't think Dreamland really matters much because that's still Battlefield. I don't know if the Blast Zones really matter that much. Um, people are wondering about like the intricacies of having Smashville and some town and city um, hazards on for the platform moving, but people kind of like it with the platform moving. Platform variety definitely lends itself for like competitive play, um, being able to assess the situation. Although it uh, adds a sense of like, it's not really like random like items. It's more so because like all the movement that happens on this on, on these levels can be calculated. I mean, there can be time because they happen like strict movements. Similar to like Yoshi's Island and Yoshi's Brawl, how like Randall and what's the other nigga? The one that pops up on Yoshi's uh, Brawl stage, um, how those characters kind of pop up. It's, it's not random. It, they come up at like, certain times. So so if one was like smart about it and like was that integral and like counted down the time like, all right, Randall's popping out now. They can actually time it if they knew it's not random like items are. So I kind of like those elements popping in. I want levels like Fountain of Dreams to return back. I love the platform variety. Oh, Carl Lucina slipping right there. I like the platform variety of Fountain of Dream moving up and down. Hopefully we have a nice variety of stages. Hopefully people go, oh, I see what, ah, oh, she caught me too. I choked right there. I saw the counter. It caused me to stop. It stifled not to get counter hit it, but by the time I was able to do my B, it was already too late. I was a good move on Lucina's part. Respect, respect. Um, other than that, I just hope that we don't limit the stages. I just hope that we have like seasons. I don't know. What do you guys think? You guys think we should have seasons? Um, do you guys think we should just limit it down? Um, you know, they're going to add even more stages when uh, DLC drops. So I don't know if Piranha, Pir well, they said Piranha Plant is going to be the only character. Well, Piranha Plant is coming free. Um, I don't know if a stage is coming with them. We're not going to get like a Piranha Plant pipe stage or anything like that. <laughs> I doubt it. But when the other DLC characters come, who knows what stages they're going to have? And are they going to be competitively viable hazards on or off? And who knows all that shit? Um, but I'm, I'm going to keep my eyes to the ground, you know, I, eyes to the ground. <laughs> I guess that's the new expression. You guys have your eyes to the ground. I meant to say, keep your ears to the ground. Um, but what do you guys think? You think that we should probably have, uh, like a season seasonal thing where like certain stages, uh, certain stages go out of rotation, uh, like other competitive games. Um, or do you think that uh, we should only just have like a set limited amount? Because there's, there's a adding like variety to, to uh, the stage lineups will definitely add to, I don't know, Smash Ultimate being that much of a fresh game. Because like after a while in Smash, you, you just got tired of looking at Town and City and Smashville. Remember when Duck Hunt was playable? People was like, oh, people are just playing Duck Hunt again and it's fucking music. Like, mix it up. You know, I want to see Prince Star with like hazards on playable and shit. Like, I want those things. There's so much that they can offer, my niggas. But all right, ladies and gentlemen, niggas, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, once again, I will be streaming December 6th into December 7th when Smash Ultimate drops so we can unlock the characters together and do a little labbing and shit. Uh, and also keep in mind that we only got a pro pretty much after today, we got like, what, two or three more weeks? Thanksgiving next week, that's going to fly by after you spend all the time wasting with your family and friends. <laughs> so we pretty much got like one more week technically. So I'll see y'all niggas then, shit.